Straddling a dummy with a stiletto in his hand, prosecutor John Jordan demonstrated to jurors how investigators believe Stefan Anderson was killed in his condo last June. The dramatic show and tell capped a riveting day in court as prosecutors continued to lay out their case against Anna Trujillo, the girlfriend who said she killed Anderson in self-defense. So during the guilt phase of the trial, the so-called stiletto killer decided not to testify. You saw there the prosecutor reenacted the killing for the jury. So now we're at the punishment phase. The jury, once again in Texas, decides what's going to happen to Trujillo, the stiletto killer. Well, they found her guilty, so now it's time to decide her punishment. And while she didn't testify at the first part of the trial, she decides to go up on the witness stand and tell the jury what happened and show them what happened with the reenactment. Take a look. The courtroom looked more like a theater as convicted killer Anna Trujillo and her attorney acted out the moments before she bludgeoned her boyfriend to death with a stiletto shoe. She claimed Stefan Anderson was suffocating her. That's why she stabbed him 25 times with a five inch heel. The long and bizarre testimony left prosecutors and the victim's friends and family frustrated. The testimony went on for hours. At times, Trujillo's attorney used hand symbols to try and keep her on track. They went back and forth about her past lovers, who she says beat or raped her. She also claimed the victim was controlling and had a drinking problem and a fetish for stiletto heels. Anderson's ex-wife is here to support his family. She says Trujillo's testimony has been hard for them to watch and hopes the jury's sentence is severe. A sadistic, it was savage, it was cruel, it was inhumane. She's evil. It's unfortunate that the death penalty doesn't apply here because if anybody were ever a candidate for that, I think it would be an attorney. Here's my question, folks. Do you think she helped herself on the witness stand the way she was acting? She looked, I mean, I don't know why. Well, well, now we know why she didn't testify during the guilt phase of the case. Let me bring back in Mike Brooks and the rest of the Dream Team. Wow. Uh, Mike, you know, looking at the way she's doing it and the expressions on her face, it Look looks her like she's still, she looks like she wants to commit another murder. Look at her eyes. I mean, you talk about crazy eyes? Holy. And look at these nasty looking shoes. Holy moly. Man, look at her. Just her gestures, the way she was grabbing her attorney's head, her eyes. No, this didn't help her one bit. Let me ask Joey Jackson. Joey, uh, <laughs> your thoughts about uh, Trujillo's uh, performance on the witness stand and probably a good idea not to testify initially, even though she was found guilty. I mean, this is this going to help her? Probably so, and meaning probably a good idea for her not to testify. But listen, she had to do three things. The first thing was to say, I'm a human being, right? And to have the jury connect with her to make sure that they do and therefore potentially like her. Don't know if she did that. The second thing, of course, she has to do is to speak to the issues of mitigation. My past, my past history with the other people and other men in my life, which is why I am the way I am. And then the third thing, of course, because she has to seek and she has to really have the jury focus on heat of passion because if she sells the heat of passion she had to do it as a result of all this abuse what is she eligible for two to 20 years as opposed to life did she do that all don't think so but then again perhaps the juries do are you sure joey are you sure are you sure she didn't help herself insane